Nobody really cares where their vodka comes from. But bourbon? Bourbon's different. Part of its appeal is that bourbon's really old. Older than this country, in fact. And that history contributes to this idea that each bourbon can trace itself back to a proud tradition of renegades and pioneers scratching out a living making America's only true native spirit. It is a great idea. The problem is, it's not always true. You sometimes have to cut through a lot of misconceptions and outright myth-making to get to the truth about what's really in your glass. A lot of it has to do with uh, marketing because you want to tell a short, succinct, easy to understand story. And sometimes the real stories aren't that short, succinct, and easy to understand. Currently, there are more than 200 Kentucky bourbons for sale. Want to know how many distilleries there are in Kentucky? Around 14. That math works because many big distillers make several brands of bourbon under one roof. We are very diverse here at Jim Beam. We've got products ranging from, you know, our Jim Beam four-year-old to the Booker's Bourbon, the Knob Creek, Jim Beam Black, Devil's Cut. But there's an allusion to that diversity. What can distinguish one bourbon brand from another may be little more than how long the liquid sat in a barrel. It is important to understand that you could take one recipe and make five different bourbons simply by aging it. Aging is a big deal in whiskey making. Some scotches, for example, get aged for decades. Now, bourbon is a whiskey, like scotch, but aging works differently here. For starters, scotch is aged in used barrels, but bourbon, by law, must be aged in brand new barrels. That new oak barrel, that new charred oak barrel, contributes so much flavor that if you let that whiskey age more than about 12 years in that barrel, the barrel just completely takes over and you can't taste anything else. So aging does play an important role in bourbon, but if you're paying more for something just because it's older, you may be shelling out more for the hype than for what's in the bottle. But what if what's in the bottle doesn't really match what's on the label? Take this bottle of bullet bourbon. If you read its label, you can learn a bunch of things about it. Like, for starters, that this bourbon was made by the Bullet Distilling Company in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. But if you go to Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, a funny thing happens. I am trying to find the Bullet Distilling Company. No, sir, I don't see anything. There's no record of any no business with that name. Anybody with that name having a business license. None of the bullet you can buy today was made by the Bullet Distilling Company in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, because the Bullet Distilling Company in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky doesn't exist. Tom Bullet started his bourbon company in 1987, using what he said was an old family recipe. The brand is now owned by the world's largest liquor conglomerate, Diageo, which wanted to get into the Kentucky bourbon business, but building a whole new distillery is expensive. And while your bourbon is aging, you're not making a cent. You have negative cash flow because you don't have anything to fill a bottle with. So you have to be very, very busy, but you also have to be very, very patient. You also have this brand new bourbon with no tradition behind it, which doesn't really fly in this market. So after buying a Kentucky bourbon brand for instant backstory and paying a distiller to make the stuff, all Diageo has to do is age it, bottle it, and make money off it. Buy Bullet Bourbon, just don't buy the stories they tell you about it. And I love Tom Bullet. Tom Bullet's a, a terrific, nice guy, but he's just a spokesperson. He's, he's just a front. But I think a lot of enthusiasts, myself included, have kind of a gripe against Diageo because they don't give us the true histories that I think people are interested in. Besides Bullet, other well-known brands that do this include Michter's, Jefferson's, Willett, Noah's Mill, and a bunch of others. In Kentucky, because so much is resold and shared and relabeled, it's very hard sometimes to know actually what you're getting. Bourbon's got a fair bit of duplicity going on, which is funny since bourbon's image is all about being authentic, not a bunch of marketing flim flammery. But if bourbon is America's only true native spirit, and it is, Maybe marketing flimflammery is a necessary ingredient. After all, what's more American than that? <laughs>